As a real estate agent here in Tucson, Arizona, I get a lot of buyers contacting me saying that they love Tucson, they love the desert, they love the sunshine, and they love the mountains. And they really wanna to move to this area, but they just don't want to live in the city. Just like a lot of cities, Midtown and Downtown tend to have a lot of people, a lot of congestion, and sometimes a lot of traffic, and a lot of buyers would prefer not to live right in the middle of all of that action. Fortunately for those buyers, Tucson has some great sub and they all still provide that weather, those great mountain views. But the other cool thing about our suburbs is that they're all really different from one another and they all have something different to offer different people. Today I'll be talking about all of the nearby suburbs surrounding Tucson, Arizona and how they are different from one another. And I'll even talk about some of the lesser known suburbs that are newer and kind of up and coming. everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona, and today we are talking about all of the suburbs that surround Tucson, Arizona, and the differences between each of them and what each of them has to offer. If you have a favorite suburb in Tucson, make sure you throw the name down in the comment section below. And of course, if you're interested in buying or selling a home in Tucson or any of our suburbs, please reach out to me. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel, and there are tons of other videos on the channel about things to do and see and know about Tucson and the surrounding areas, including videos about our suburbs individually, which go into much more depth about each suburb and area of town. So check those out after this one, and of course, subscribe for more of those types of videos. Like I said, I'll be going over all the different Tucson suburbs in Tucson today, but first I wanted to show you this map, which shows the Tucson city limits. The city of Tucson itself has a population of somewhere around 500 to 600,000 people, but Tucson has close to 20 20 little towns or unincorporated communities nearby. And if you include all of those areas, Tucson's population is well over 1 million. Today, I'm not going to go through all of those 20 little towns. I'm just gonna go over the top ones that people ask me about all the time. So let's start by talking about the Catalina Foothills, which is not really so much a suburb as it is an unincorporated community and census designated place or CDP. Located just north of Tucson in Pima County. I think the best thing about the Catalina Foothills is that it really does appeal to pretty much all buyers. The views of the Santa Catalina Mountains to the north are just as spectacular as the views of the city to the south. And the Foothills is great for shopping and restaurants and museums, and they have some great resorts and golf courses and just pretty much something for everyone. The school district is one of the highest or the highest ranking in the state. There are tons of hiking opportunities and the loop runs straight across east-west so you can easily get from one part of the Catalina foothills to another just by riding a bike or even taking a nice walk. The homes are older but they have a lot of character and many of them have been completely redone and most of them have really big lot sizes so you have plenty of space from your neighbors. There are a lot of different types of housing in the Catalina foothills so buyers have plenty to choose from. There are houses, there are condos, townhomes for sale or rent, Rent and nice apartments for rent, all available in the Catalina foothills, which makes it a great place to live for anyone who works in the city or goes to the University of Arizona who doesn't want to live in the city. Really, the worst thing about living in the Catalina foothills is the price tag. Homes are expensive to buy or to rent, but a lot of people who live in the foothills would tell you it is worth every penny. Oro Valley is a suburb of Tucson and it's its own town, located six miles north of Tucson in Pima. County. Oro Valley is also absolutely beautiful because you still get those Santa Catalina mountain views, but Oro Valley is just to the west of those mountains as opposed to the Catalina foothills, which is to the south of the same mountains. Oro Valley is a very nature-friendly town and they have tons of opportunities for things like hiking and trails and bicycling and golfing, but they have a very community feel and they do have a lot of farmers markets and town activities and things like that. I've read that about one one in four Oro Valley residents is retired, but I know plenty of families who live 
there and absolutely love it. There are some great restaurants there and the roads are pretty well maintained and I never see a lot of trash on the ground when I'm out in Oro Valley. It's pretty clean. And the biggest difference that I would say between Oro Valley and the Catalina foothills is that in general, you're going to find newer architecture in Oro Valley, but that sometimes means you're going to have subdivisions where all of the houses kind of look the same and you're more likely to have a homeowners association in Oro Valley, whereas a lot of homes in the Catalina foothills don't have HOAs. Oro Valley is also pretty expensive to live in, but again, residents would probably tell you that it's well worth what you pay for. As long as we're talking about Oro Valley, I also like to point out that Catalina is a census designated place in Pima County, just north of Oro Valley. As Oro Valley gets more and more popular and more and more expensive, people who want to move to Oro Valley are choosing to live in Catalina instead because it's more affordable. But the thing is, Catalina has always been kind of a rural vibe and that's probably how most people who live in Catalina would prefer to keep it. Saddlebrook and Oracle are also census designated places in that same area, but those are in Pinal County. Oracle is home to the Biosphere 2 experiment and Saddlebrook is generally a retirement community. Just like most suburbs of Tucson, all these areas provide some beautiful mountain views, but Catalina and Oracle and Saddlebrook are fairly remote. And if you do end up living there, you'll do some driving to get to the city of Tucson or even Oro Valley, depending on where you live. On the other side of the Catalina foothills is Tanca Verde, which is a suburb in Pima County just northeast of Tucson. A lot of people don't want to live out there because it's a little too far away from the rest of everything else, but a lot of people want to live there for that very same reason. Again, the homes tend to be older and fairly expensive, and you're much more likely to have land and no HOA if you live in a house in Tanca Verde. So that means privacy and freedom for a lot of people, not a ton of shopping or restaurant opportunities out there, but there are several very popular places everyone hangs out and don't be surprised if the waitresses learn your name if you become one of their regulars. Tanca Verde has that kind of vibe. A lot of people own horses out there and Tanca Verde is great for anyone who wants easy access to hiking, camping, even fishing opportunities on Mount Lemmon, but the fact that Sabino Canyon and Reddington Pass are nearby makes it great for anyone who wants hiking and exploring. Vail is a census designated place in Pima County, 24 miles southeast of Tucson. Vail is an up and coming area, but is really just exploding with new construction. And since it's at the base of the Rincon Mountains, the views are really pretty because you're right next to Saguaro National Park East. So again, you have some great hiking and mountain biking opportunities. Vail has one of the top rated school districts in the state. So a lot of people move to Vail or to the Vail School District just for the schools. And with these schools, you also get a very family-friendly community feel. A lot of these families are really involved in football or baseball or dance or swim teams or clubs. A lot of military, both active and retired, live here because it's not too far from davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson. And this is one of those areas of town that doesn't have a lot of restaurants or shopping opportunities yet, but give it five to 10 years and I really think Vail will be absolutely booming. Next Next, we move on to Sawarita, which is a town in Pima County, just south of the Tohono O'odham Nation and 15 miles south of Tucson. The population was right around 35,000 people in the 2020 census, but I'm sure that it's much more now. I believe the town is one of the fastest growing towns in the state of Arizona, and it definitely makes sense why. It's a lovely town with still very reasonably priced houses and real estate, and a very fantastic family-friendly community feel with a lot of neighborhoods that offer some great amenities. Even though it's growing fast, it's still a small town with a small town feel and a lot of people like that vibe. And everything is pretty much newer. Most of the homes are only 20 or 25 years old or newer. Most of the amenities and other buildings are maybe 10 years old. Lots of walking paths and biking trails and fun parks for kids of all ages. They're starting to put in more restaurants. They even just put a hospital in there. So even though this isn't a part of Tucson and there aren't nearly as many things to do in the suburb as there would be in the city of Tucson, most people have what they need in Sawarita. And if not, it's a 20 minute drive or so to downtown Tucson. So it's not like you're completely away from everything. This is a great place to live if you plan to work at the Tucson airport or Raytheon, which is one of our top employers here in Tucson, or if you plan on working at the mines, which are all near Sawarita. Green Valley is an unincorporated 
unincorporated community and census designated place in Pima County. And it's traditionally a retirement community with primarily 55 plus neighborhoods, although I've known some families who've lived there as well. But because Green Valley is just to the south of the town of Sawadita, and because both towns are growing so quickly, they are practically merging together. And most people refer to these areas almost interchangeably now, like, oh, I live in Sawadita Green Valley. Green Valley and Sawadita actually aren't far from the Santa Rita Mountains with Madera Canyon, which offers some of the best bird watching opportunities in the world. And Green Valley is about an hour drive to Patagonia Lake, which is probably the most popular largest lakes for Tucsonans to hang out at. So if you like fishing and all the other things that you get at a lake, you might enjoy living in Green Valley. Green Valley also offers some great golfing opportunities. They have a fair amount of medical options and community events for sure. The last big suburb on the list is Marana, a town in Pima County located northwest of Tucson with a small portion in Pinal County. Marana really boomed in size during the 1990s and it's still growing strong. There's tons of construction happening there. Marana is kind of an old farming community, but a lot of the land is now being developed for residential. There's a huge community being built up right now called Gladden Farms. It's very family friendly. That's on the west side of the freeway. And then east of Interstate 10, you've got Dove Mountain, which is close to the Ritz-Carlton and tons of hiking trails and gallery golf course. And the Tortolina Mountains are great for trails and mountain biking. Plus there's an outlet mall in Marana that a lot of people like hanging out at. It's just a very nice growing suburb that is still relatively affordable, especially for what you get in a home. But one of the best things that some people like about living in Marana is the easy access to Phoenix. It's only about an hour and 15 minutes to the Phoenix airport from Marana, which is nice for anyone who has a family or friends or work in Phoenix who doesn't want to live in Phoenix. There are actually a lot of people who prefer to live in Tucson over Phoenix, but they have obligations in Phoenix, so they need to be there often. And that's when Marana might be a good fit. Now, just north of Marana on Interstate 10 is Red Rock, which is an unincorporated area in South Central Pinal County. It has a population of just over 2,000 people. It had a population of just over 2,000 people back in 2010, but I'm sure it's much more now. Still an incredibly, incredibly small town, but there's a ton of new construction going up there and the housing developments are really nice. There's still almost nothing out there in the way of amenities, but again, I see this as an area that should start booming soon. South Tucson is a city in Pima County and it is an enclave of the much larger city of Tucson. As you can see from this map, it's located inside of Tucson and this is its own city with its own mayor, its own police, its own fire department, but it's right smack in the middle of Tucson. And a lot of people who move here from Mexico live in or near South Tucson. And as a default, there are some absolutely delicious Mexican restaurants and shops which sell traditional Mexican foods and other goods throughout this small city. I hope you've learned a little bit about Tucson suburbs and communities outside of the Tucson city limits. Many places in or outside of Tucson have that small town feel, but a short drive into the city will give you restaurants and shops and clinics and museums and parks and all those things you, that most people look for in a city. I truly believe that Tucson is something for everyone and I love that our suburbs are so diverse and different from one another and they're all pretty nice. I really love our suburbs and I probably sell a lot more houses each year in the suburbs than I do in the city of Tucson. So buyers clearly love our suburbs as well. If you're ready to buy yourself a home in Tucson or any of the surrounding areas, give me a call. I'd love to help you out. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel. And please explore the rest of the videos on this channel about more in-depth details regarding our suburbs, plus all the things to do and see and know about the city, my hometown. Subscribe on your way out the door to follow along for more future content, and I'll see you in the next Tucson video.